and welcome to the Old Timers and new Newbies official YouTube channel. And my name is Jazz Darren's Panic Madahar and this is part two of my airbrush technique video. In the first part I looked at the different types of airbrushes you can buy. If you remember I said there was external single action, internal single action and then internal double action airbrushes which are the ones that I have and I've, I presume most of you have got that. Now it's time to put some paint onto a sample model. I've already prepared a 1 32nd scale. Um, it's a Nakajima Oscar, really old kit that I had. Um, I primed it already with uh, Vallejo Surface Primer which coincidentally I think is probably the best primer is on the market. Don't worry about the, the colour that I'm going to use, it's purely for demonstration purposes and the principles that I'm going to discuss with you will always remain the same. Now, before I start, I'd like to talk to you about health and safety. For the purposes of this particular video, I will not be wearing a face mask, but normally I always do. And the reason why I'm not wearing it is obviously I can't talk and then spray at the same time and discuss things with you. Just because a paint may not be toxic, it is still harmful if breathed in for prolonged periods. And always remember the golden rules. 1. Make sure that you spray in a well ventilated area and open the window. If your budget allows for a spray booth, turn it on for at least 5 minutes before so that it would start working properly. Keep your pets and your kids away, there's nothing worse than them coming into a um, paint filled environment, it's bad for them as well as being bad for you. And wear your mask until you have completely finished your painting and your cleaning. Now here in front of us we have some examples of paint commonly used for modelling. Unless it's designed specifically to be sprayed out of the bottle, like this lacquer thinner, which all you need to do is just to shake it to agitate it and it will, it's thin enough to spray almost immediately, then you will have to thin it. Now for this uh, demonstration I'm using the Tamiya deep uh, green uh, paint with its own particular thinner. I hear you can buy um, alternative products, something like Ultimate Modeling Products Thinner, which will, well, it says that it can be uh, thin any acrylic paint. I personally um, have never used it, so I can't really um, talk to you about that or make any recommendations. I have heard some very good things about it in any event. However, for this particular purpose, I'm going to be staying with the uh, Tamiya Thinner. I mean, after all, it is designed for this particular purpose. And I also have to say one little thing. Tamiya, unlike other acrylic paints, contains its own um, acrylic retarder. For those who have used Tamiya in the past, you realise that it is very, very good to spray and very rarely if ever clogs. And that's because it contains something called acrylic medium and retarder. Just a couple of drops into paint that doesn't already have it in will help it flow better and reduce all the nasty clumps that you get on the tip of your nose of the airbrush. Now, I always use a ma masking pot because um, I like to mix my paint away from the airbrush. I know some people mix it in the, the airbrush cup on the airbrush which is fine I suppose but I prefer to mix it thoroughly um, myself so here we are I'll put that down and put that to one side I've already mixed my uh, paint up and in a separate paint pot I prefer to do that I'll just get my airbrush now normally you'd hear the rattle of my um, compressor but I've already filled the tank up it's going to be a couple of minutes worth of spraying just fill it up now some people like to keep the top off 
I thoroughly recommend that you put the top on. There is nothing like if you drop the airbrush or you put it down to one side and you see your paint go all over the place. So I prefer to keep my top on. So here we go. Just a simple grey primer. Um, just going to do some even coverage on it um, and I will demonstrate the proper technique for using an airbrush. Now some people just start their airbrush really really quickly and if I do it on the underside here they'll just open the tap straight away and try to flood the, uh, the surface. If you can see it's kind of wet and it's prone to running. The secret here is light coats. You can do two or three very very light coats and that will give you beautiful even coverage. Now the other thing you have to remember you have to look at is how you airbrush. If you've ever seen those um, Discovery Turbo programs where they've gone into a car manufacturing plant and BMWs or something like that and they've shown the machines that you use to paint uh, spray the, the cars they do it in a certain manner now I'm going to demonstrate this as best that I can now normally when you spray all the tendency is to move your wrist now that will give now hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate this um, if I do what will happen is the closer it gets the the model the better the line the further away the fuzzier the line okay and if you continue on your model that way in effect you're going to have one part of your model sprayed correctly or maybe even slightly heavier than the other parts um, just with misty paint on it and you want to avoid that the technique here the correct technique is to use your arms and perpendicular and parallel sorry to the model surface spray ideally no more than maybe two inches away from your model no more than that it will prevent the paint which has been thin drying before it hits the surface it'll give you a grainy finish which we what you call graining and the only way to re re remedy that will be to sand actually the model so here we go using our straight arm technique see just nice light coats the paint will dry quickly and if you notice I'm, pray, I'm, I'm starting my spraying off the model and I'm finishing it off the model the reason to do that if I just ended it there as you can see you're having a dark, sp dark spot you want to avoid that so start off start off and end off see nice even coat perpendicular and par parallel to the model at all times gives you a lovely even cut I'm going to have to turn my compressor on so I might have to speak a bit loud so I hope you can hear me now spraying off spraying on spraying off now that's a light cut very light cut it's good as you, as you can see um, that it's still streaks where it's not even few seconds for the first coat to dry, this will dry really quickly spray again, no more than 3 inches off the airbrush start off, start, finish off okay. as you can see here we're beginning to build up a lovely green colour okay. now, I can continue like that but, to get a really good finish turn my model 90 degrees now spray off spray on now I will say normally I'll wear the gloves it'll stop paint getting onto my hands but I haven't put one on so here we go See? spray off Nice light, light coat, but you can see it's beginning to um, fill the gaps in. I give it a few seconds, then it dries. You can see it's still parts of it still wet, but it's, it will dry pretty quickly. Now I'm going to turn it again back 90 degrees, and because um, the coverage is done really well, I'm going to put a slightly heavier coat on that. Keep my 
my hands, perpendicular as the best as I can do. Okay, now you can see it's filling up lovely now, absolutely beautiful. And I reckon just one more pass at 90 degrees should do it. Lovely, there you have it. Now, as you can see, not only does it give it a good finish, an even finish, but I don't know, especially for those wingy models, the modelers like I am, do it this way, parts, depth into the paint rather than just making it one kind of monotone colour. It's giving it a um, kind of a different feel to it. Now, that's um, not necessarily intentional. Some people will use different techniques and in my next video I'll also look at curry and uh, polished shading techniques to be able to demonstrate what I mean. But that's actually given a lovely clear, clear finish. Not too far and sprayed not too far away. And that will dry absolutely beautifully smooth. So there you go. There's my demonstration on basic um, airbrush. My next uh, video will look at, and I'll use actually this um, particular wing to show you uh, two techniques. One is called pre shading, and one is called post shading. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've got something out of it. Please continue to subscribe to the Old Timers and Newbies YouTube site. And I will look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.